They're so cute at this age, playing sports, saying adorable things, lovey-dovey with mom and dad. Then somewhere between pre-adolescence and puberty. They talk, you know, talk about their, adult, their child being uh, walking around with a halo, and then all of a sudden they become a teenager and they're a different person. We see, we see significant changes from six to eight. Middle school educators see it. We look at the children every day. We look for any kind of significant change, whether it be emotional, whether it be a drop in academics, which would red flag us that there's something else going on. So certainly we look at all stages of development. Parents see it too. I've seen her mature much um, faster. She has more responsibility. She's really into her studies. Well, she gets an attitude. And she never used to get an attitude before. Um, but I always attributed it to trying to exert her independence. Besides all the physical changes, there have been a number of interesting studies lately showing all the brain changes in kids. Like these brain scan studies done by the National Institute of Mental Health. This is a time-lapse movie looking at actual children being brain scanned, MRI scanned, every two years. They take the same children prepubertally through young adulthood and they get brain images in these kids basically every two years to say what is this period of brain growth. And what they found going into the teenage years, there's an imbalance. Some people think is that some of the risk taking that goes on with adolescence, some of the depression and other things, suicide that go along with adolescence, maybe that's an imbalance in certain brain areas. Certain parts of the brain, the prefrontal cortex that are involved with planning and decision making and attention, those are the latest maturing parts of the brain. A more recent study in mice looking at the teenage brain and memory netted similar results. So they put these mice on a board and the board involves a certain area that gives them a mild electrical shock and the idea is mice and people don't want to get shocked so they avoid the certain area. Dr. Daniel Dickstein, the director of the Pediatric Mood Imaging and Neurodevelopment Program at the Bradley Hasbro Research Center, says prepubescent mice and the adults quickly caught on and avoided getting shocked. But adolescent mice don't seem to learn it despite multiple trials. They just couldn't seem to get it through their furry little heads. <laughs> I think at this point kids can't help but they, they are what they are. Um, but I think parents need to be sort of aware of the changes and uh, the change in the relationship between a parent and their child as they go through adolescence. Dr. Dickstein says it's not a good idea to be over controlling or to ignore these changes. And I think the big take home message to parents is um, it's a balance. Just like it's a balance in their brains with these changes, it's a balance in your relationship about how you can help your teenager go through these changes. Dr. Dickstein says the research shows the human brain isn't fully mature until the mid-20s. So be patient, parents. Want some tips on parenting a teen, including some of the warning signs to look for that may signal your teen needs professional help? Log on to turnit10.com, keyword health. With this special Health Check 10 report, Barbara Moore-Silva, NBC10 News.